This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 324, Uncle Sal. Welcome to Comic Geek Speak, I'm Brian Deemer. And I'm Brian Chrisman. And this episode of Comic Geek Speak is sponsored by eGerber Products. If you're putting your comics in regular old bags and boards, then you're not preserving them as best as you could. You should be using Mylars, and uh, the best Mylars in town are from eGerber Products. Uh, I have I used to be a big Mylar hater because of that crinkle. <laughs> uh, well, now they make them just a little thicker so they don't crinkle so much. And then I saw the difference of comics kept for, you know, 15 years in regular bags and those kept in Mylars. And I said, okay, enough of that. It's all about the Mylars, baby. It's all about the Mylars. <laughs> so now I get all my comics in Mylars, and they're all from eGerber. I like their, their two mil ones myself. Those are really nice. And uh, and I get their full back backing boards because they're super rigid, and uh, so it's like your comics are totally safe. I love it. So check it out, eGerber Products, eGerber.com, the protector for the collector. And joining us this episode, fresh from Italy, is Uncle Sal. How you doing, Sal? I'm doing good, guys. How are you? Very, very well. I don't know about I don't know if fresh is the word I would use. But... <laughs> My ass is numb from sitting on an airplane, but back nonetheless, you know. So uh, how was the Luca? You were there for the Luca? Is the Luca yeah, Arts Fest? Yeah, is that what it's, it's, it's taken up. It's taken a gigantic upturn. That show. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the last one I went to wasn't last year, but the year before, and they had had it um, just outside the walls of uh, Luca. Luca, for people who don't know, is just little. It's a it's a city about twenty minutes south of uh, Florence. And um, it's, it's, it's just, north. It's just medieval, surrounded by north? these medieval walls, and um, they, they had the festival outside of the walls. But this year they had it right in the middle of town, and my God, there must have been eighty thousand people there this year. Holy! Oh my God! Eighty? Yeah, how, how no, it was. It was like a. I mean, it was no comparison to the last one I went to. Oh, it was. Oh, it was. Geez. I mean, that thing was enormous. How do they even fit eighty thousand people in that little well, town? Well, you know, I mean, over the well, it, again, it was. A, it started. Uh, it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday show, so it was over the the four days. But I mean, Friday, Friday, Saturday, it was. It was just mobbed. I mean, it was just the, the, the village itself was just absolutely swarmed. And it's great. It's very encouraging too, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of teenagers. You know, a lot of kids, not just adults, and um, just fanatics about comics in Italy. And That's awesome. Panini was there, and Simone was there, and I was set up with Simone, who is, you know, he's huge. He's like the Elton John of Luca now, <laughs> uh, Wolverine and X-Men. And uh, just the people there just couldn't be any nicer, and it's a fantastic situation. And I think I'm going to, you know, do a full-blown setup there next year. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. My, my yeah, trip- you're going to have a I mean, I just wish... You, you know, I, I hope you get there underneath some of the some of the uh, colder weather because when it starts raining, it gets a little. But man, they, the people at Luca just couldn't be uh, cooler, and the, everywhere you eat, the food is fantastic. And um, you know, they push those espressos a little bit too much, <laughs> but uh, you'll have a great time. Yeah, we leave you're, on you're Friday. There for how long now? You're going for a whole big tour, right? Well, we're just doing. Um... Rome for a few days and Montepulciano and Luca. It's just kind of a small okay. nine nine days and yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, and, and the trip now is is so fast. I mean, I got a direct flight from Chicago to Pisa, which is where you got to you know you have wow. to kind of land in Pisa, which is like twenty minutes uh, from Pisa to Luca, and it's my it's it's great, man. You're just it's there. You don't have to change in Milan and deal with a lot of the, the crazy Italian customs and all that bullshit, you know. Yeah. Customs agents in Italy, it's man, it's like a you know Midnight Express. <laughs> you know, duct tape shit your body to get it in the country. Up. When you got a hairy ass like mine, you can't afford to pull a you know pull ass hair off. Or, you know. you got to shave down first. <laughs> you got to shave down a little bit, you know. And with Simone, you know, there we had a great time. And Claudio Castellini came down. He lives in Rome. And then Gabrielle. Pilato was there. He's just as full of shit as any other American <laughs> or Italian you could find. And uh, we had a good time. A what? Little, little excessive, but we had a good time. Well, what kind of things, since I've obviously never been to a con outside the U.S., I mean, do they have 
Do they have panels? Do they have... Uh... Yeah, lots of panels, uh, lots of... Uh, they treat they treat the comic people there like rock stars. You know, they have lots of panels, lots of... It, it's tough if you don't speak the language. You really do need an interpreter with you because it's it's... You know, when you're kind of bouncing around Italy, you can cheat and get away with just speaking English. But when you're at the when you're at the con, you really gotta have somebody with you that speaks Italian, or you're in trouble. But it's a lot of the same stuff. But yet, there's a lot of stuff that that's really cool because you, the Italian and French editions. My God, you can't believe how great they are in terms of the paper and the packaging and the design of them. They do the American comics. They, they they don't focus as much on the individual issues as they do on albums, which is like you know they put five or six issues together in in trades, and um, they, you know sometimes Panini, which is the the Marvel Panini is the is the biggest publisher in Italy. They 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 have the license for all the Marvel products and Dark Horse and a lot of the Image stuff, and they'll repackage a lot of stuff you know for the Italian market. And sometimes they'll do it with, you know, new stuff. Like Simone did a couple of Wolverine pieces for the Wolverine trades that you won't see here in the States. And that there's a lot of cool stuff that you run across there. But otherwise, it's a lot of the same shit. You know, the <laughs> toys, the ass juice, a lot of the same stuff. You know. any, any, uh... It's just Italian, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Everybody any... asks you about the Sopranos. And all <laughs> that shit, you know. Any folks dress in costume over there? Yeah, a lot of costumes. They're not nearly as good. I mean, no offense to the Italians, but you see some costumes that are put together with toilet paper and you know, little cheese slices. You know, they're not. They don't take it as hardcore as a lot of the guys in the states. Mm -hmm. But you see some. You know, it's 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 like I said. It's very encouraging to see lots of teenagers. But yet again, you know, there's that sickening. You know, love of manga they have over there too. I mean, they're crazy about manga in Italy the same way we are here in the states. Mm -hmm. So, but yet, you know, they're 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 big on the American guys too. They going back to Kirby and Busema and you know the stuff from the sixties. So, now for for it, for a uh, an American a fan of comics in the, in the United States who say they've been to San Diego, they've been to you know the New York Con, they've been to the Wizard World mm -hmm. shows, Chicago, all that stuff. And maybe they're looking for something new. Is this a con that that you would recommend to uh, to a person who I wants to experience? I wouldn't a couple of years ago, only because like Angulam. Angulam is another one that there's really there's three shows in Europe. There's Essen in Germany, which is predominantly gaming, and then you know, so if you're into gaming, Essen is like the Super Bowl. And then there's Angulam, which is three hours south of Paris, which is this huge con that they've been having in France for like 35 years because that's where. All the publishers, uh, actually, all the printers started in, in Angulam, and then there's Luca. Angulam has become is is was like the Super Bowl of of cons in Europe, but it's over the last few years, the town, the village is is a really like this medieval Roman village. It was one of the few French villages that the Nazis didn't destroy during the Second World War, and it's such a pain in the ass to get to because. The French always have train strikes the week of the con, <laughs> and getting housing at Angulam is is harder than San Diego, believe it or not, because you got this little village that is pretty much real sleepy the rest of the year. But during the con, it goes crazy, and you got to stay like twenty, thirty miles outside of the city oh. and commute in every day. Oh, so for my money, Luca, if you want to do a show in Europe, because I mean, the, the, Luke, the village itself is a little, is is enough reason just to go because it's the coolest. And sleepiest, and it's 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 a picture book. It's like literally, when you're an American, you feel like you're at a Disney World kind of resort because it looks like that. I mean, it's got this this um, old world Italian feel to it when you're in the village. And so, uh, if you're really into comics the way I am, I highly recommend it. I mean, you won't be disappointed. There's so much shit to do when you're there. Uh, you know, in the way of just the village itself, and then there's tents. They got the tents spread out throughout the village, so you kind of are forced to explore. It's impossible to get lost too, because the village is surrounded by these walls. <laughs> yeah. So when you hit a wall, you just bounce <laughs> off and go back in the other direction. Yeah, People and go, oh, I don't know my way around. I'm going to get lost. Like you can't get lost. It's not possible unless you're, you know. Simone. <laughs> yeah, for for people who who don't who haven't seen you know pictures of Luca and stuff, this mm -hmm. this convention is not in like a giant convention center. It's in a whole no. bunch of buildings and tents and everything scattered just, throughout. Just the just within the village, and they set up these big tents, which 
like I said, I've done it in the past, and they had it like outside of the city in like this huge parking lot area for the soccer stadium, and it kind of, you know, it felt really shitty. You know, it was like you're at a real, you know, you're like you're at a swap meet. But now that it's inside the village, which they've done for the last couple of years, and the lady, uh, uh, one of the, the organizers told me that they're going to definitely keep it in the walls. Um, it's, it's, man, I can't recommend it enough if you're, you know, you want to venture out there. And again, that time of the year, you know, most people go to Italy in the spring or in the early uh, fall because that's when you want to take your vacation because of the weather or when most Americans go there. But to go now... I mean, you can get a ticket. You know, I got a ticket from Chicago to Pisa for like under five hundred bucks. You know, round trip, and then staying in the village. You know, there's always a million ways to to find you know housing and on the cheap and do different things. So, I can't recommend it enough. It's a good time. All right, CGS Luca next year. (laughs) (coughs) In pants? I don't know know, about that. I think my passport. Well, sign up now. You should have your passport anyway. You know, it's they're, they're pretty cool about it. You know, with the passports, because you know they're and, and again getting getting tourists into Italy that time of the year, they're they're pretty dying you know, out. Pants, you need and, your passport anyway, because we're going to Tijuana this year in San Diego, and don't well, think you're not. So, yeah, you some of us you may can't play some games anymore. Not. You know, when you cross the border, <laughs> one of the Aspen guys last year from the UK, they wouldn't let him back in. Really? Had, yeah, yeah, that was the story, because he had some kind of half-ass IDs, and because he didn't have a driver, valid driver's license, he went into Tijuana, and they wouldn't let him back in, and they deported him back to the U.K. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they've, they've really, they've taken, they've started to take it seriously at the border. Yeah. Well, this year, you, you uh, well, in 2008, you have to have your passport, plain and simple, so. Yeah. Yeah, you know, be careful down there. I don't know why people really want to go to Tijuana anyway. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Thank well, you. see, Sal, I live. I'm sorry. If you're old enough to drink, there's no reason to go down there. No, 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 you know, Sal, Sal. $10 hookers. Sal, let's. <laughs> it, I, I, With the guys I, I hang around, you know. Well, yeah, but see, see, I, I lived there. For for two months, so I'm I'm familiar with the uh, the situation there. I did and, not know that. And and see, pants and Murd and Matt and even Peter have never been to Mexico, right? So just okay. just going on a Saturday afternoon, get out of the madness of San Diego for Leave the afternoon. The con? Yes. All right, oh, all right, now wait a minute. Now, Saturday afternoon's a whole other story. <laughs> Saturday afternoon's that, and now well, you lived in Tijuana or you lived yeah. in Mexico? I lived in Tijuana. Okay. Well, then you know what I'm talking about. I mean. If you go at night, you gotta have eyes in your ass. Right, right. I'm talking about during, during the day. The day. Yeah, I agree. You can, you can be a good time. You pick up a few things. You look around. Right. And you could have a, you know, but you know, the, most guys are talking about going on a Saturday night. They're already drunk to begin with. Yeah, no, no. Half no, of no. them got their head up their ass. They don't have their IDs. They don't have money. They don't have debt. You know, and you get separated, and then you know you got to worry about it turning into Escape from New York right away. <laughs> right? No, no, no. I'm talking about a leisurely walk. You walk across the border. You go yeah, past all the guys story. selling yeah, that's stuff. That's worth it, I think. Maybe you get a uh, taco you and enough. you come back. You know, it's that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, or you know, yeah, just but so they can me, see Mexico. Like I said, yeah. You know, I, I live around enough Mexicans to not need to go to Tijuana. <laughs> 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 and I lived in L.A. I lived in I lived in Watts for you know for three Ooh. years. So there's nothing they could show me in Tijuana that I already have, like got away from. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the baby? It's good. It's he's he's a pisser, but it's good. Man. You know, it's a, you know you know what I'm talking about. It's a lot of work. He's he still you know wakes up every two hours and cries, but uh, it's you know getting big, man. They get big fast. Yeah. You know, I thought I was gaining weight in a hurry. This kid's you know. I came back from Italy, and I'm like, man, whose baby is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's big in a hurry, you know. Did you? Did but you? It's, it's life altering. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you hear that uh, we have the second one on the way now? I heard. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. That, was that a you know was that planned or was that a <laughs> you know Edgar Winter concert? Well, it's a little it's a little bit of both. We we wanted a second one <laughs> soon, but it just came maybe a little sooner than we thought. But that's fine. Yeah. Gets yeah, it over with sooner. My wife's talking about a second one, and I'm just like, hey, you know, when I can sleep, you know, more than three hours in a row, then we can talk about having a second. Because <laughs> right now, I'm just still walking around, you know, look like look like Bela Lugosi. I mean, <laughs> no sleep, and I, I, I was I was excited to go to Italy just so I could sleep. Right. I, mean, I, I slept on the plane, and I stayed by Simone's place, and I slept there, and it was. Uh, I felt bad leaving her alone with the baby, but, you know, business is business. 
Right. How was uh, the con for you business wise? It was good. I mean, you know, you got to keep things. That's the other thing about Europe. They don't want to. They don't want to pay for anything in in the way of artists. They're used to getting everything for free. So if unless you're selling a litho, or you're selling an original for under, I would say right around under the the, the fifteen hundred dollar range, you you can forget about it. Hmm. So you got to kind of cater to that, but. It's like the Wild West in the way of copyright and licensing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do whatever the hell you want, and no one's going to police it at all the way (laughs) they do it here. So you see artists all over the place just, you know, doing whatever they want in the way of lithos and prints and sketchbooks. So, you know, I don't know. Next year i got to see. I'm going to definitely talk to Alex about possibly doing some stuff and maybe do some things with Panini. I don't know. Because now that he's over at Marvel possibly do something he's been at dc forever and nini doesn't handle dc so but i'm definitely looking to go in next year you know you got it's like san diego you got to book it a year in advance because mm-hmm. it's gotten so crazy now but i'm staying at a hotel next year because i need to get some sleep so <laughs> and i just shoot the shit till four in the morning and then you turn around and it's time to get up yeah that's and, no good <laughs> it's not a good thing man you're shooting the shit till four in the morning every night talking about you know Porn stars and you know names of gay bars and shit like that. <laughs> not, not, you turn around, you're like, what the? What time is it? Oh, but we had a good time. He's, he's, you know, he's the talk of the town now in Luca, which is good. He deserves it. He worked his ass off on Wolverine, and uh, I think he's still waiting uh, for waiting on a script for X Men, and then he's jumping right into that. So awesome. But they're treating him like a, you know a big shot over there now. Excellent. So, um, but, oh, go ahead. No, no, that's it. I'm just, oh. you know, so, uh, nice to see the guy doing well, you know, that's all. Yeah, well, his artwork is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I'm actually looking forward Tons to. covers now. He just did a shitload of, I think he did like 21 covers in the last month or the last like five, six weeks for Marvel. Oh, jeez. Unbelievable wow. how many covers they've been throwing at him to keep him busy. Well, they look good, you and know, why not? Is he still doing the detective covers for DC? Um, I don't think they're going to let him do any more of those because he's got, you know, he's, they're going to, you know, they're talking about doing, uh, especially if he's going to be on X-Men, they're talking about possibly doing an exclusive. So mm. usually that kind of goes when, you know, you can't have it both ways. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think he's gonna, they're going to let him do some special market stuff for DC, you know. They're kind of lenient with that, but... I'm sure once he starts X Men, he's not going to have time anyway. Right. A group Buck versus Wolverine is going to kick his ass. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, his uh, his sister Gloria helped me get um, accommodations for our travels there, and so mm-hmm. one the one night we're there, uh, uh, we're going to go out and uh, have dinner, and then uh, you know they're going to show us around the town a little bit. To, you know, mm-hmm. take us past some buildings we have to see or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, don't ask Simone for any for any. Um, <laughs> sights to see because he doesn't know where the fuck he's going and you have to ask him so, no i'm not kidding i mean listen you know simone hey simone only you got to cut him some slack he's only lived in the village his whole life so you'll go hey simone what's this here and it'll be like a plaque in front of it and then he'll go well and he'll try to bullshit you for about you know 10 seconds and he'll go i don't have a clue i have no fucking idea and i'm like you've only walked past it like your whole life and you don't even know what the hell it is well it's, it's so gloria gloria couldn't be you know more helpful she's fantastic yeah the whole town though the wall around the town you when you walk around it, it's like three kilometers so right. the entire town yeah, inside is so you tiny do. you got to take an afternoon where you just you know you walk you can rent a bike or you can do it on foot i'm more of a stellar physical specimen so i did it on foot <laughs> uh, you walk around you can there's a path that walks around the top of the wall and it's right. fantastic yeah in the view and the and the you know with all the trees and you could see you know, from up on top of the wall, you can see overlooks the hills and different things like that. It's 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 like you see in all the postcards. It really lives up to all that stuff. You know, some villages, you know, you see pictures of it, and then you go there, and you're like, all right, they took a picture of, like, the one place in the whole village that looks that good, and the rest of it, you know, looks like, you know, Angel Medina lives across the street. <laughs> but, but Luca, <laughs> hey, 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 listen, he caught me, too. The last con I was at, he's listening to your show now. <laughs> He goes, man, I heard all the shit you've been saying about me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I didn't think he had a computer. You know? <laughs> I didn't think they sold Puerto Ricans computers in Chicago. <laughs> but he's the one guy that they sold it to. So, 
<laughs> you got it on the black so market. I got to stop talking shit about him now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. But no, it's it lives up to all the pictures and postcards. And I'm gonna, I got a whole ton of uh, pictures that I'm updating uh, Simone's site with and Alex's site and my site with. So if people want to take a look at Luca, just go to the website at uh, awesome. AlexRossArt.com and uh, SimoneBianchi.com. You know, I have a good time. I'm glad you're going. I told him. I, I warned him ahead of time. I said, hey, you know, you're coming out here, so get off your ass and show him a good time. Because so, <laughs> he's a workaholic, that guy. His girlfriend, Greta, is fantastic, you know, and uh, she's like the mayor of Luca, his girlfriend. And, um, you know, good people, man. I mean, that kind of stuff doesn't grow on trees. It really doesn't. Well, that's um, uh, that's probably going to be the highlight of our vacation because it's always great when you go someplace and you can spend some time with locals because then you really get to know the place, you know. It makes all the difference. Yep. It really does. His parents, you know, his, his, his mother and father, his sister, you know, everybody just, you know, they treat you like they've known you your whole life. And it's so much, you know, I like to be a traveler, not a tourist. You know? Exactly. You go to Luca, you really feel like, you know, there's none of that us and them kind of attitude that you can get sometimes at certain places you go. And uh, I was glad to hear that you were heading to Luca because uh, – it's a good time. Well, after the, Plus, the good thing about a good thing about Luca too is you get a lot of the Italian artists all go to Luca for the show. You know, Castellini and Gabrielle, and they were supposed to have more American. I think Jr. is going next year. Jr. is oh, invited. Very yeah. cool. There you go. Yeah, next this year there weren't too many Amer. I, I didn't know of any Americans that were there. A couple Marvel was supposed to send a few, but they didn't make it out. So cool. Yeah. So. So let's talk. Let's shift gears here a little bit. So let's. Um, there's been uh, some controversy of late, or not controversy, but discussion about uh, Alex's new Captain America design. What are your thoughts on that? What do I think about it, or, or yeah. what do I know about it? Well, I don't know. Maybe both. What? <laughs> what? You know? Uh, I, you know, I think it's 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 kind of based on some stuff I've seen him do in the past. Uh, you know, some some he had some designs for Cap. He was supposed to redesign. A whole, you know, a whole shitload of Marvel characters a few years ago, X Men and different things like that, and um, I kind of see it as a temporary kind of design, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, if you know what I mean. Right. And he was playing around with different things that he wanted to do with the character. He wanted to to play a little more of a realistic look for him at first, but yet when he knew, you know, you know what was going on with the with the continuity and the character. You know, he just decided to play with it a little bit. I wasn't, you know, like a lot of people that criticized it a little bit, I wasn't all that nuts about the shininess, you know? Right, yeah. But, you know, I kind of liked the whole black take on the lower half kind of thing. And knowing Alex, I know he's got like, you know, he had like five or six designs that I'm going to post a whole shitload of his other design, of cap designs. He had like six or seven of them that he did. And then they narrowed it down to that one. And, um... But, you know, I, I think it's it's based on the stuff I see him doing that's coming out at Marvel. It's, it's you know, the stuff is just going to keep getting better and better. He's got a ton of stuff he's doing for Marvel now. Is he, is he excited about that stuff? I'm sorry? Is he excited about the, the new Marvel work? Yeah, he is. I mean, he really wanted to, you know, he's always known he wanted, you know, he's going to eventually go back to Marvel. He wanted to finish up the oversized uh, Treasury Editions. You know, the Superman, Batman, uh, Shazam, Wonder Woman, and then the, the JLA thing was just kind of an afterthought. They really hadn't planned on it when they did the first four. But yet his, he always knew that there was just so much at Marvel he wanted to do. Uh, you know, cause that's what he broke in with. But yet he's still able to keep his feet in over at DC. He's going to be doing the, the monthly Superman cover and the monthly Batman cover. Uh, for I'm not sure if it's Detective or which one he's doing now. Wow. I don't think it's Detective. I think it's the other Batman title. And um, he's going to be the JSA cover because I guess the, the Kingdom Come uh, is in the storyline mm -hmm. right. uh, now. So he's going to be doing some other stuff with them <clears throat> and uh, with the, with the JSA book. And then with Marvel, just tons of stuff on the table that I've seen that he's doing for them now because he's really excited about uh, them letting him do a lot of the classic Marvel characters. And I think probably a, a, a you know a book down the line. He's just so fried from justice right now that he wants to just take some time and uh, you know focus on covers for a little while and, and 
you know, get his life back because he, man, he was working like a dog for like two years in a row on justice. Right. I mean, seven days a week, he was just, you know, completely burnt out. Went to Vegas this weekend, if you can believe it. I wow. When I came back, I was shocked. I was like, my God, he went out of town. <laughs> hey, and he's going to the New York con. Yeah. And, yeah, that's another thing. We signed, um, they're good guys. We signed, and Simone's coming out for that, and Gabrielle, and a couple of the other, you know, a couple of the other guineas I talked to coming out <laughs> for it. Um, and Alex is, yeah, going to be there Friday and Saturday. And, uh, you know, he's excited about it because he doesn't do a lot of cons because he was just uh, up to his ass in work. So he's like, well, what do you think? And I'm like, I don't know, what do you think? And then, you know, I told him Toronto's, you know, this year, you know, last year I said, you know, we were really close to doing Toronto, but we just couldn't work it out because of the schedule. And now that Toronto's moving to August, that's, that's a, you know, going to be a really cool thing because normally we're just so burnt from San Diego, you just can't enjoy anything. But Toronto's turned into a great con. And uh, so I said, I don't know, maybe New York, because New York's in April this year. So you don't have, we don't have to freeze our asses off. Yeah. You, don't need, you don't need, like, huskies to get to the jab. <laughs> so he's like, you know, he said, okay. So um, I'm like, cool. You know, I don't, as long as I don't have to do Art Expo anymore, man, I'll do the New York con standing on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I did both of those last year, man. And that was yeah, like, they were back to like back. I was dry yeah. hump. That was like, <laughs> that was not good. <laughs> that was like, holy fuck. That was sand in the Vaseline doing both oh. of those. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I lost... My, uh, it was like I lost any sense of soul I had doing both of those. It was like, geez, <laughs> back to back. That that New York art scene is like, whew, you're standing next to the Satan as a booth at, at Art Expo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah, no, so New York, and uh, let me see. That's it for me. Probably WonderCon, maybe, and then uh, that SuperCon up in Oakland has turned into a good con for... Um, Original art, the one that um, Buzz's friend Steve Morgan runs, um, and then of course San Diego and uh, probably Toronto. I gotta see, because you know how it is at the baby now. You gotta come. right, mm-hmm. day by day. Like, yeah, you know, you gotta take it like you're, you know, daddy daycare over here. I was at the baby. <laughs> I had to watch him all day today, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's Working tough, isn't it? Booth. Not good. <laughs> I could. My wife had to go out and one of those baby showers. So either I went to the baby shower, I stayed home and watched football with the baby. And I don't know if I got the better end of the gig. Right. <laughs> baby yeah. showers and baby christenings, I swear to you, are like the unholiest things on the planet. You're like, why the fuck do I need to go to a one-year-old's birthday party? They don't know what's going on. Exactly. Oh, tell me. Tell him I was there. He'll never know. <laughs> That's right. You know? Photoshop you into some picture, you know. Yeah, and then these women, you know, like put earrings in baby's ears at one. I'm like, does they really need jewelry? Does she want to make that statement at one? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I got to sing about baby earrings and little girls. It just looks weird to me. Yeah, we, d- we didn't do it because it is weird, yeah. It looks strange. You know, the earrings, they look like Tina Turner, and you're like, he's one year old, you know? Right. So I was home with the baby today, and man, let me tell you, it takes years off your life. <laughs> years. It's hard to relax. <laughs> it's pretty hard, you know? You're, you're, it's like, holy shit, I need to surround my house with like those towers with the searchlights, you know, like style like 13 around right, there. Yeah. To keep an eye on them. <laughs> Yeah, you're just hoping every moment that he decides to take a nap, right? Yeah, and then if you got to, it, it got to help you if you got to use the bathroom. Yeah, you know, you got to kind of you know make a deal with the devil to go to use the bathroom because the minute you set him down, the kid starts screaming, and you got to try to talk to him from inside the bathroom and yell <laughs> to him, "Hey, everything's okay," but you know, when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah. yeah, well, wait till wait till he's mobile. And then he can walk or crawl around while you got to go use the bathroom. Well, then they throw up all over you. Yeah. I mean, this, kid, this kid is like Linda Blair three oh. times a day, and it's chunks now. Oh. You know? Yeah. It's like the little army man he swallowed is in there, and he's <laughs> and, you know, oh. the knob from the TV. You go, look, what the fuck is that doing in there? <laughs> and their drool is like Aunt Jemima syrup at this point, you know. <laughs> like the fly they just regurgitate on you all day and you're like nice you know 
I got to I'm gonna start getting those disposable ER smocks. You know those right. ones you just yeah. put on and they rip them off when they're full of blood and exactly. them on the floor. That's what I need around here. Right. Yeah, that's safe that way. Oh, well, otherwise, man. he's good. He's a good kid. He, he looks like his mother, so I'm, I'm, he'll be all right. <laughs> That whole half Asian thing going on, so I'm gonna just lie. You send him to school with karate outfits on, so people think he knows martial arts. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just I'll leave him alone. Go with the stereotype. You know, Worked you know. for me. You know, <laughs> any Asians in my school, high school, you used to just assume they all knew martial arts because you know you saw Bruce Lee, so you didn't fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you should have named him, right? Yeah. Bruce Lee Abenanti, and then I was thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, my. I named him after my brother, which, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, because my brother and I fight all the time, but uh, <laughs> it, it's, I, I'm not big on traveling, man. When I went to Italy, I saw people on the plane with babies that were born, like, in the terminal. Right. <laughs> and I just don't get people taking babies on planes that are that little. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. It just seems weird to me. Yeah, we're leaving. We're important. leaving Clara at home, so we have Italy all to ourselves. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's what I, I mean. I want to fly all adult airline. I don't want yeah. anybody under twenty-one on the fucking airplane. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah. How about anybody under thirty? You know. There you go. Even better. Uh, but you know, I'm a little bit progressive, so twenty-one. Uh. But I mean, I see like not little kids, but babies, little tiny babies, and I'm going. You, you, your asses couldn't fucking wait. You a couple years to get on to go on vacation. You you took a one year old or a three month old to Italy with you. That 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 just seems bizarre to me. I don't get it. So, you know, my wife's like, "Well, what about next year with Luke?" And I'm like, "Ah, eh, he's still a couple years away from that." Right. You can't get have a good time with a baby. I mean, you know, it's too much work. Right. Oh yeah. You go out at night and. Yeah, well, they got to go to bed at seven thirty, and then you want to go out, and there's no babysitter, right. and then if you if you take them out, then they don't sleep right, and then you're miserable, and then it's a whole right. mess, you know. And then, we, well, see, that's what happens with me with with when I go to when everybody's like, oh, everybody, see, people that don't take business trips assume you're full of shit. That when you say, oh, I'm going to Italy, they look at you like, yeah, right, you know, and they wink at you like you're really just going to, you know. Play Dolce Vita, you know, like I'm near like fucking David Niven walking around in a smoking jacket the whole time, <laughs> there, smoking a pipe, so you know, smoking a pipe with you know Vanessa Del Rio on one arm. <laughs> like guys, guys, I'm there fucking sitting at a booth from like you know 8 a.m. till they kick me out of there, and you know you're 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 shitting espresso because that's all you get to eat all day. I'm really working when I go to Luca. And so, you know, I try to explain it to my wife. I'm like, it's no, it'd be no fun for you guys because I'm working the whole time. And at night, it's the same bullshit. You got to go out and schmooze with the different, you know, I'm trying to talk to a couple of Italian publishers about doing Atomica and different things like that. So uh, I can't be, you know, racked with guilt because, you know, you're bored that I'm sitting behind a booth, you know, trying to deal with an interpreter, you know, sp- speaking broken Italian to these people. Right. So I'm like, it's business. It really is. You know, so lay off. My brother always wants to go. Come on, I'm going to go. I'm like, no, because, you know, you're like, I can't babysit, you know, when I do these things. Took my wife one year to San Diego. A mistake of fucking biblical proportions <laughs> taking your wife to, to San Diego. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's up there with, like, raining frogs. It was the <laughs> biggest fucking mistake. I mean, it was like... When I got there with her, I had that look on my face. Like, you remember when they told O.J. he was not guilty? <laughs> and he had that, that like, what? Say that again? You know, that funny stare, you know? Right. That was me when my wife started nagging me in San Diego. I was like, I must be fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, boy. You so- can't do it. It's just too much work, you know? And then, you know, they get bored and they're not into it. And they, you know, they think it's a vacation. You know, and it is like 10%. The rest of it is, you know. Yeah, well, you got to send her off to the zoo for the day or something. <laughs> then they, yeah, but then they're by themselves. You know, they get bored. I right. say, go to the pool, you know, hang out, go shop, whatever. But they're like, yeah, but who am I going to go with? I'm by myself. I'm like, well, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> go to the pool with Buzz. You know? The Lonely Hearts Club? What the fuck do I know? I'm not working here. You know? <laughs> I'm like shitting in a coffee can half the day. I, you know, I can't even make it to the bathroom. What do you want from me? <laughs> Now uh, you mentioned Atomica. How uh, how's that coming along? It's good. I mean, it's it, the problem with Atomica right now is you just. I mean, I'm three issues completely in the can. I mean, and I put the one out, 
you know, for the last con I did, I just haven't had the time to, you know, go through the chain of the way you got to do things, which is soliciting and, and you know, I got to just start from scratch again and solicit. But the work is, you know, I continue working on it a ton. And then I am also working on a couple of uh, proposals for Marvel for their Max line, which I'm real excited about. And, you know, I don't know. It, again, it's just proposals. It's nothing that's carved mm-hmm. in stone. I was um, I was talking with Axel over there about possibly doing some stuff, and then I sent him a bunch of Atomicas for them and some of their editors, and they seemed to like it. And that was the one guy from the forum, Rich. Rich, mm-hmm. C- Rich Ginter. Ginter. Yep. Yeah, I guess he's in the bullpen over there. He said that they were looking at it and they liked it, so he sent me a nice email. So I wanted to thank him that's for awesome. uh, looking out mm-hmm. for me. But I'm going to put together a couple of things for them. I got a few ideas that I've always wanted to do for Marvel because you know the, the self-publishing thing is great. But I've always, you know, I'm not going to lie. I've always wanted to work for you know some of the big, uh, two big companies. But of course, they've you know through the years told me to go fuck myself. But we'll see. <laughs> so uh, I have a let's talk about original art a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Pants here, Brian has. Uh, begun a quest which I, well, I i think is pretty cool to um to collect ultimately before he dies <laughs> to collect every page every original page from dc's 52 right it's it seems like it but uh well i mean again you know we talked about it it's realistic that in your lifetime you may accomplish it or get damn close you know i've, I've got five percent so far i think <laughs> so now as a as an as original art dealer um if somebody came to you and said, "Hey, you know, I want to buy the all of Justice, right?" Like, oh. let's assume, you know, or I mean, obviously, I mean, it's you know, a totally different uh, ballpark. Yeah. But, no, but it's similar. Does that um, do dealers feel good about that? Does that worry them? I mean, you know, what's from a dealer side when you hear somebody wants to buy an entire issue or an entire run? What does that well, mean to you? Well, first off, he shouldn't tell them. Because they'll bust his balls on prices. Ah, well, that's true. You know, keep it to yourself. Yeah, because thanks, when I know I got when, when I know I've got something you want, then I can play with the price. And other buyers may play with the price too. That's one. Two, it's doable because I know I got a lot of buyers that have certain issues of things that they just use it as their personal little. You know, that's what they collect. They're looking after a certain issue. I've got Th- Thor two hundred seven that I've been trying to assemble, which was the first comic I bought which wow, is Thor cool. with the Absorbing Man. And I've got, you know, and then you'll see pages pop up periodically from time to time, and you just grab them, you know. Um, three, I would go to the inkers right away. Yep. You'll, you'll get a lot of pages. You could probably buy the pages for a song compared to, you know, what you'd get them from, from the artist. You know, uh, very doable. It, again, it's, it's, a, it's a not that lofty a goal if you're, you're, you're realistic about the timing of it. You know, but... Anything that people go, oh, that such and such page will, is in my collection, and it'll never. That's bullshit because I've seen absolutely every piece of art float around at one time or another. It just always seems to happen that way. People, for whatever reason, get tired of things, or they need money, or they just decide to trade. So don't get discouraged if there's certain sequences that you think are just gone forever because it's just not true. Mm. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've heard people go to me, oh, I've got page of whatever, 11, and that's the holy grail to me, and I'll have to lose a kidney before I, you know, yeah, well, guess who lost a kidney? <laughs> I always see shit out there floating around, <laughs> so I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I just said you were never going to sell that. Well, I got divorced, or, uh... you know, it's the money for gambling, and you know, whatever, <laughs> it, it always, shit always floats around. But, but God, please don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially especially other collectors, because you know they'll double the price mm. on you. But yeah, I, I've been picking up pages at uh, at cons. I actually, was out yeah. in Chicago. Um, one of the inkers, actually two inkers from that book, were there, and I got some pages from them for a very nice price. You know, and long sequences. So it, it's something I just started doing the last couple of months, and now it's almost become a habit. You know, I see a page, I inquire yeah. about it, and. I got a good friend of mine. He's after a lot of the uh, his thing is all he collects is Infantino uh, Star Wars pages, mm. and you know, at the time they were a, they were a joke in terms of how much you could pay for them. But now, 
you know, they've gone up in price because of Infantino and different things, and still he's got this enormous collection, but you know, he's been doing it little by little over the, you know, over the years. So, no, it's, it's, I think it's doable. I mean, how many pages are we talking? 22 pages <laughs> an issue, and times what? 52. 52, 52 issues. issues. And it's doable, you know. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, it's black and white, so yeah, it's easier yeah. than if it was painted. Yeah. If it was, like, painted, like you were telling me you wanted to do it for Kingdom Come, I would say good luck. Yes. Right. Or, you know, or a painted, <clears throat> excuse me, or a painted project that somebody was, like, holding certain, you know, pin-ups and, and double-page spreads, like, as, you know, standalone images. Then it, it's a lot harder. Right. You know, but, but, but with black and white stuff... You're 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 immediately eliminating a, a a big portion of collectors that only collect color, because I've got collectors that that's all they collect is color stuff. They don't go near black and white, and vice versa. Guys that like pen and ink and don't care for painted. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, I've I've got fifty four pages right now. I actually, have sixteen more uh, coming my way soon. Oh so. my goodness! Yeah, no, it's doable. <laughs> I mean, especially around the holidays. Around tax time, yeah, tax time. You go to I hear a lot of a lot, cons. Yeah. I mean, you'd be amazed where you pick stuff up sometimes. Plus, think in terms of trade. You know, I mean, if there's ever anybody that's got a crazy sequence that they don't want to part with, that you know, just just tell me, and I'll you know, if there's something they want to trade that I've got, I I'll work I work that way sometimes with people. <laughs> you know, where it's like, hey, you know, because Alex doesn't like to trade, and other guys that I rep don't like to trade their art, but sometimes what I'll do is I'll buy it and then trade the art for it, you know, trade it for something. If it's something you're dying to have, you know, <laughs> or they won't part with it any other way, then, you know, I, if I can help, just let me know. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> yeah. Because usually those guys all hate me anyway, so it's all right. <laughs> once, once they find out he got it from me, it's worthwhile. You know? <laughs> Most other art dealers, they all hate me, but it's all right. You know? <laughs> I tell them, you know, I love it because it's one of those things where it's like, guys, what, you're not going to talk to me anymore? It's like a Christmas present, you know. <laughs> some of them are nice and some of them are just legitimate assholes. And, you know, it's, you know, we don't have to make out. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I've, had, I've had a good experience so far. Nothing really bad. It's just been just right place, right time. And, you know. Yeah. Well, you're, you know, plus you're at a, you're in a good situation. You attend a lot of cons, and you attend, you know, it's a good idea too because you attend, you know, different types of cons, smaller cons. Mm-hmm. You, you attend bigger and smaller cons, so you know, you, you'd be amazed where stuff pops up sometimes. Oh yeah, where you just see things floating around that they have, like, hey, you know, I've had these pages for whatever, and especially now as the book starts to, as time goes, you'll see, you know, people will be willing to part with it more and more. Than they would like right when the book is on stand because that's when it's most popular. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, that's doable. Mm-hmm. Now, does that um, when you have? I think we might have talked about this before, but I I can't remember. But like when you have someone coming up and they want to buy a piece of art, and and if you can read them right, or you maybe know them, and you know that this is a person who's um, you know it's for their collection, not for them to turn around on eBay. Does that? Uh, does that make you feel better that you know the art is going to a better place? Or? No, not really, because it. it see, uh, my goal isn't to sell people art. My goal is to sell people art over ten years. You know, I'm not. I can sell you a piece of art and and get the best of you, or or if I get the best of you and I gouge you and you pay more for it than you know you normally. That, that once you're going to walk away and you're not going to you're going to go what an asshole or I got ripped off whatever. And you're never going to come back, and uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to you know, sell you stuff over a long period of time and, and find a price that we're both happy with. But there's really no way to gauge that because I've had people that are, again, buying things and I see it for sale right away, you know, and they swore to me it was for their kid or mm-hmm. it's going on their son's room's wall or it's for their dying relative. And then I see it on eBay, you know, three days later. So I try and I, once you buy it, God bless you. You could do whatever you want with it and I don't feel good or bad about it either way mm-hmm. you know as long as you know we came to a happy you know medium where it was like it was a fair deal for both of us then the next time you see something you know you won't you know because most art dealers you have the reputation of being assholes or being you know sharks and who don't really know the product and who could just as easily be selling shoes and that's not the case with me i'm you know in the bit in the i rig i got into business to be an artist and then my stuff 
just looked like I did too much brown acid in high school <laughs> for Marvel and DC to want to hire me to where I needed to say, you know, I can make a living connected to the, the business that I love. Okay, I started out as a favorite Alex, and then the next thing I know I'm, you know, wearing a suit at San Diego yelling <laughs> at Puerto Ricans. You know. <laughs> it wasn't my intention. But it's not, a, it's not heavy lifting, so mm -hmm. I can't complain. You know, it's it's a great job, and I work with you know good people. But um, you know, you got to be careful with some guys. You know, some art dealers that are just really, you know, trying to get the most they can from you, and they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. Most of them are cool guys, but there's a few I won't mention any names that are real assholes. You know. Watch out for them pants. <laughs> Hey, it should be all right. Yeah, I you know, it, it's not is it, it's not undoable. But again, you know, you go to cons. If you weren't going to cons, I would say you're you, you're you know you're in for a long haul. But but you know, check eBay occasionally. I'm checking eBay actually right now. <laughs> yeah, check eBay, especially around the holidays. You'll be amazed oh, yeah. how many people just just want to unload stuff or trade stuff or just kind of thin out their collection. You know, around the holidays or and you know around tax time. Mm -hmm. Who are the who are the bigger artists on that book? Uh, let's see. Um, the bigger guys. Bigger you know, guys. Let's see. I think Derek Robertson did a couple issues. Uh, Phil Jimenez did a couple yeah, issues. Those are going to be tough. Yeah. Well, I can have a few Phil Jimenez pages right. coming my way. Awesome. They're not as bad. As, they're not as bad as if it was like um, Brian Bolin or guys that are in the UK that are really kind of. Some artists refuse to sell anything. Right. Then you'd be fucked. Right. Because, like, I know guys that just absolutely hold on to every original. Michael Golden is like that to a certain degree. Claudio Castellini, Gary Gianni. There are certain guys that they won't sell anything. And they'll let certain pages go. But for the most part, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. But the guys you're talking about, they sell their originals. So, you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're not in for oh, a yeah. bad, uh, you know, as you would if you were like a guy in, you know, Istanbul or something. Yeah. And, and it's fun going to cons because I'm, I'm getting to the point with my comic collection. I've got so much. I can't go back any further because it's really prohibitive. I mean, I go back to like the late, late 50s. So now I turn my attention towards the artwork there. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, and it's one of a kind. And that's what I really like about it. You know, I have something that mm. nobody else has. Now, are you going for covers too or not? Oh, I haven't gone for any covers. for. Well, actually, I just bought my very first um, cover, a DC cover from uh, Dark Stars because that's a flash on it. But it's mostly just interior pages. I have a few splashes, but uh, yeah, just those, something that I really those, like to look at, and you know, I'll, I'll grab it if I can. Those 52 yeah. covers are all J.G. Jones. Yeah. They're yeah. all really expensive. I have a preliminary of one of the covers, but that's <laughs> as far as I go with that. Right. I have the hardcover book of the hardcover book of the collection of them <laughs> <laughs> for nineteen ninety five. Hey Sal, um, I saw that there's a there's this rumor that Wizard World Chicago Ooh. might be moving. Yeah, I saw that. You know that. anything about that? I saw that. I heard I heard different rumors. I heard they're going to be bought. You know that 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 Reed was trying to buy them. Ooh, because they, they do the New York con. They do New York. They run New York because they're basically just a company <laughs> that runs cons. Mm -hmm. Right. I heard that they were trying to buy uh, Toronto. I had heard that, you know, Texas is going this year. I had heard that Chicago, they're trying to sell it. So it depends who you talk to. Mm -hmm. you know? But, but I, yeah, I heard the same thing, that they're trying to sell Chicago. And, um, you know, Reed was going to buy them and move it into the city. That was the rumor. That would be pretty cool if it was actually in the city. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know that. You know, I hope they do one of the two things happens. I hope Wizard kind of kicks it in the ass or they sell it because I think it's definitely on a downturn. I don't think it's – I think it's kind of – it's stagnating where people are kind of – you know, and the way Toronto is coming on, you know, I mean, right now if I had to pick, you know, Chicago or Toronto, I would go to Toronto. I really would. It's wow, become like that cool of a show. Chicago's in your yeah. backyard. You'd rather go to Toronto. That's saying a lot. Uh, yeah, no, really. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it, it's just become that kind of a show. I mean, they, they remind me of what Chicago was five or six years ago when they were actively pursuing people and trying real hard to get big names. And you go there in the morning, and the line is around the block. And, and you know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. right in the heart of Toronto. And there's so much cool shit to do in Toronto. I mean, uh, Chicago's out in city, Rosemont. Yeah. And Wizard doesn't really, you know fake it that they don't you know really give two shits about chicago as much as they used to and uh, you know it's it's they, they're not really actively pursuing big names the way they used to toronto is 
Well, that's so, cool. So, you know. It would be interesting. I mean, you know, every once in a while the convention circuit needs some changes. And Well, you know, it's it's like, look, if a car's not doing so hot, but you at least see him trying, you know, it's, it's like, okay. But, my God, there's so many damn shows now that if you kind of go to it and you feel that it's stagnating or they just don't give a shit, you know, that's the worst kind of thing because then you start to see the same people, you know, at least with... You know, up in Canada, it's the same story. You know, it's similar to Europe where they really like comics. And, you know, Chicago is out in Rosemont, and it's, you know, and I think moving Toronto to August is a cool idea. We'll see. I mean, I hope, you know, but there's that whole, you know, clusterfuck of shows now around May and June. Yeah. make it kind of weird this year. I don't know which ones. I'm going to shake them up a little bit. I'm going to do... the one in the bay and then you know god i wish that's one in seattle could uh, could uh, although i heard they did better this year i wish that one was uh would catch steam because it's so cool you know to go up to seattle for that show Just, you know they're nice people and a lot of hobos but it's nice <laughs> pants you'll have to get your uh passport if you want to go to the toronto con oh yes because um, that's yeah, only you know, like you guys should you know, honestly, you should, a, you should try to make it up there, it's, man. It's, it's a good show. It's driving distance it's, for us. It's I only know, like I six know. hours or something, so that's no big yeah. deal. And I've been to Toronto twice, and it's just such a beautiful oh, yeah. city. I mean, I've been downtown. I've been to the Rock, Hockey Hall of Fame. They're nice people, and there's there's a lot of cool comic shops. And, mm-hmm. and walking distance to the con is so much stuff. You're right there where the, where the Blue Jays play, yep. and the Hockey Hall of Fame is right there. Yep. And, uh, you know, King Street, which is maybe like four blocks away, this enormous strip for you know shopping and lots of cool bookstores and great little Italy, great Chinatown. Yeah, they have a great Chinatown. You know, awesome restaurants, all you know close by. So you know it's kind of like you know what San Diego has going for it. It's got a lot of things just outside of you know back issues, you know of Killdozer, you know to get you <laughs> to go to the con. And uh, don't forget next year the CGS Super Show in September. It's it's coming right up, man. If it's in September, shit. I mean, you know, you turn around. No, because you know, once you get into spring, I turn around. It's baseball season starts, and I turn around, and it's Labor Day. That's how it is for me. Because there's so many cons and planning and bullshitting that you turn around, and it's September. So, you know, I'll I'll you know, Buzz and I'll haul our asses out there again next year. We had a great time in Reading. I mean, you know. Cool. Well, you, we got a new place this year, and it's uh, it's bigger, and, and it's going to be really cool. We had a good time, man. We got a chance uh, the last day in the morning. I went back to that cigar store you guys sent me to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we went over there, and then we went to, uh, we found a couple little stores. I bought something for my wife, and, you know. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, went back to that diner. Oh, know, yeah. We had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> they allowed you back at the diner? Well, I was, you know, it was one of those deals where I didn't go that night because I hadn't slept in three months. So, you know, I went and I was sleeping that one night when you guys got thrown out of the diner. So I just figured if you were back there with Buzz, they wouldn't let you back in. Well, you know, Buzz, you know, Buzz is, you know, Buzz is Buzz, but they got a minority quote, I guess, so they let us back in. <laughs> they didn't want to get sued. The whole yellow uh, angle that he was trying uh, to pull uh, on uh, them. So yeah. they brought we brought Jesse. Why I don't know. I think you know, with me, Buzz, and Jesse there, like the whole demographic of the of the town just slanted, like they couldn't believe. You know, oh, oh no, thirty Je- percent, you know. No, Jesse would have plenty of compadres in this town. Would he? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was all right, man. We had a good time. I mean, it was. Uh, I just wish I, had, I, had, you know, was more of a human being and got more sleep before that trip. But, <laughs> you uh, did look tired, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not tired, like tired from like, you know, like I just got out of a POW camp tired, you know, like I was just like ingrained no sleep, not just like a week or, you know, it was, it was like, it just got to a point where, and then I went by, I stayed with Buzz and you know, where Buzz lives, it's like, you know, Jesus Christ, it's, it, it's like gangs in New York where you're, you know, in the five points when you go by, stay by him and he knows everybody and he goes to the corner store and they're swearing at each other in Burmese. And I'm like, I just want to relax. You know, I don't have to want to constantly be, you know, fighting with Jesse and fighting with Buzz, but we had a great time. Well, good. I was glad to see so many people turned out for you guys. 
Yeah. It was, it, it, everybody seemed to have a great time, and I know a lot of the artists said they sold more sketches and made more money at the Super Show than they did at you know any of the big cons they went to all year. So that's good. That's good. good. That makes me happy. Well, you know, yeah, and in the end, I think it's just you know the fan, everybody that, that came out, the listeners seemed to have a good time. The people, you know, who were peddling their ass, you know, had a good time. So everybody, you know, it turned out it was really surprising staying at the hotel and. No, we can buzz and I. We can have a good time doing whatever. Some guys go to cons and they they tend to. You know, you could travel with some guys and they can be tight asses. But with these guys, we can have a good time doing whatever. You know. Good. And uh, driving from New York was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be because I was originally going to fly into Philly, and then you know go from there. But uh, it worked out all right going into Brooklyn. Yeah, and the uh, the cool thing about next year's uh, convention, the same weekend at the at the convention center is a llama convention. No, it's an alpaca. Show. Oh, I'm sorry, it's an alpaca show. I'm sorry, an alpaca show. <laughs> oh, nice. I know so, come for the comic. Stay you for guys the alpaca. are already talking about next year's. Jesus Christ! Oh, yeah. Well, you know how it is you, when you're running the thing, man. You oh, got to yeah. plan it. Like, yeah, it's never enough time, man. There's never enough prep. It always you catches up to you. No, nope. I actually uh, just signed the agreement for the facility just this week. Oh, very nice. Where, now, where's it going to be? Because you were telling us about it this year. You were saying next year. You're gonna yeah, we there's about it. there's a convention center in Reading, uh, and uh, it, so that's where we're having it. It's it's not far from the mall where it was this year, but it's an it's an yeah, actual yeah, yeah. convention center, and uh, we oh, have this cool, whole yeah. big ass room. I mean, it's an enormous room. And uh, right, right. It, it used to be a um, the, the AT and T facility up on the hill. And it's uh-huh. it's it's real easy to get to. I mean, it really it's right off the right off the the bypass there, and it's it's easy to get to. And like like Brian said, a lot of room. So good, man. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, should be very cool. Had, you know, and, and it's like you know when you get to a certain stage in marriage, it's like any excuse to get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm home>. no. <laughs> it's like what? There's a con. Oh shit! I hate to go. God, it's another con. I gotta go to. My ass is skipping to the airport. <laughs> I'm fucking OJ jumping over the baggage in the Hertz commercial. I get no hair, man. I'm fucking running out of here. I'm telling you. Pushing old ladies out of the way. Boom. I'm like Steve McQueen on the motorcycle. The Great Escape. I'm fucking jumping over shit and running. Thinking tunnels with a spoon. No. <laughs> Poster a fucking Raquel Welch on the wall, and there's really a tunnel behind it. I'm doing whatever I gotta do. <laughs> well, because you know, all it, your it, prison references. Right you there. know how it is. You live in the part of the country where it's seasonal. I mean, it's starting to really get like ass cold. You know, here in Chicago, where you're, like you walk and you're like, holy shit. It was, you know, we got this whole global warming thing. So the last couple of last month or so was kind of scary that it was so warm in October, right, in mm-hmm. Chicago. I mean, really bad, like 70, where you were going, holy shit, what's going on here? But now, forget it. It's cold, like like cold, cold, you know. And so for the next couple of months, that's it. I mean, you know, you're, you, it's just nothing but shoveling stairs and trying to get your car out and, and you know, swearing when you're walking to the car because it's so damn cold. So when spring gets here, man, I'm ready to go. I'm like, let's go, man. You know? is, is this your first, going to be your first winter in the house? No, last year was. And my okay. office is, is like Ice Station Zebra. I mean, it's like I go into my office because it's downstairs, and it's just like, you know, the thing where they find a guy with his wrist slit and the, the blood is frozen. I mean, that's how bad it is in my office in the winter. Got those fucking space heaters, and you're literally jumping from space heater to space heater, and I'm like Scrooge down there with the gloves with the fingers cut off. You know? <laughs> so, you know, when spring gets here, man, I'm like, psh, when... We start talking about going to you know to WonderCon for San Francisco and shit like that. I'm like, let's you know, let's go, man. But I, I get a lot of work done in the winter. You know, I, I, I kind of you know like winter from that point of view. Less distractions. You know, you get you know you settle in and just accept it. You know, you're like, well, if it snows, it snows. You know, but out here in the burbs, man, it's like, phew. you know, it's like Fargo when you're out here in the <laughs> suburbs. I'm used to the city. Where, you know, you got the, the the black snow. Everything's dirty, and you know the dog shit on top of the snow drifts. 
out here in the burbs, it's just one rule after another. I mean, you got rules on how you got to shovel, you know, left to right, not right to left, and you know, your snowblower has to have wheels that are this wide, not that wide, and there's always bullshit rules out here in the burbs. Wait, you have snowblower rules? Cans, you know. You have snowblower rules? No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got like 14 garbage cans, which is, you know, different colors. Sometimes I just want to fucking throw something away and I get like a brain freeze. Like, you know, Tourette's, which can to put shit in. Yeah, this can, is wet plastic, paper. This is paper. paper torn. This is untorn paper. This is paper with letters on it. <laughs> this is for porno. I mean, it's like, you know, I get in arguments with my wife all the time. I'm like, fuck, I just want to throw something away. You know, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, oh, you got to worry about the landfill. Fuck the landfill. I just want to throw something in the garbage. You know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you know? I like in the city, you could put a body by the garbage can and they'll take it. You know, a couch. I parked my Nova by the garbage can and in the morning it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Here in the suburbs, it's like you find, like, a note that the garbage man writes. This box, honest to God, if it's a box is, is bigger than three by three, they won't take it. Oh, God. You have to, like, cut it down and disassemble it and break it up. I'm like, it's a, you guys got a fucking garbage truck with a compressor, and you can't take a box. <laughs> you know, what kind of pussies are you? <laughs> You know, and then it leaves, you got to buy stickers, you know, it's $8 a piece for a stick. So I just like, fuck it. I leave the leaves there, let nature blow them away. Fuck exactly. it. I do the same thing. I refuse to rake leaves. It's just a dumb thing. Well, you know, you guys got, you know, they got all these fucking rules. And I'm like, you know, Oak Park, you can't park on the street in front of my house. So, like, if someone comes over and wants to stay and they leave their car overnight you got to call it in. So you call it in and you go, and they're like, well, you've got three left. It's like the Gestapo. You get like 10 a year of letting people park in front of your house. Well, that's and crazy. then I go, well, what do I do when I run out of the 10? And they're like, I don't know. You just can't park in front of your house anymore. Yeah, I'm like, so proper, let me get this straight. So my property taxes and all this shit, I can't park in front of my fucking house, right? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, well, suppose I die inside my car. Will you tow it away then? <laughs> well, well, sir, I don't know. You know, I'm like, lady, I'm kidding. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, most bureaucrats don't have much of a sense of humor. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, you, you, you call some of these, these assholes up, you know, when, you know, like when I had the problem with the raccoon or whatever. There's all these rules to get rid of a raccoon. I'm like, what fucking rule? Look, can't you just, you know chase this fucker out of here? They're like, no, sir. You have to hire a trapper. And then you can't just release it. You have to, I'm like, oh, great. I got to put him in rehabilitation now. <laughs> Instead of just killing him. <laughs> Fuck. I'm like, like rabies and what if he doesn't like, you know, so wait a minute. So now what if, do we got to get him counseling? Or what are we going to do? Because I, I kicked him out of my house. If he's distraught or what happens now? So he, goes, he goes on the welfare rolls. and then Yeah, uh, I'm to... like, what the fuck? And it's like, you live out here and you walk around and it's like, Jesus Christ, no wonder like people like pick up an axe and wipe out their whole family out in the suburbs. You know? <laughs> at least in the city, you know, at least you're in the city, it's not so bad. You know, I mean, I thought, I used to complain about assholes throwing couches on windows and shit living in the city. You know, when they want to move at midnight, they just throw start throwing furniture out the window. Out here, <laughs> They'll give you a ticket. You know, oh, you can't throw a couch out a window. <laughs> There's rules of couches falling more than 10 feet. You know, and, you know. So now what I do is I throw shit in my neighbor's garbage can. And then these assholes take it out and put it back in front of my, you know, in front of my garbage can. <laughs> oh, man. You know, all these weird-looking squirrels, different colors, orange and black, and all these fucked-up animals I got out by me. When did squirrels... We got black squirrels out here. What ha what happened? You know, I thought they were gray. Aren't squirrels just gray? You know, out here I see all these different kinds of fucking mutations of squirrels. All the squirrels like, where know, we are are like brown. One turns to steel, and the other one's like cyclops. All these fucked up looking squirrels out here. <laughs> I tell my wife, I'm like, is that an orange squirrel? And she's like, yeah, isn't that beautiful? I'm like, no, it ain't. That's some fucked up looking like wild squirrel out here. I'm, uh, you know, next thing I know, I'll be living in my attic. <laughs> It'll eat your ankle or something. Yeah, it's fucked up. Squirrels are supposed to be gray. 
It'll, Not it'll, black or orange. I'm it'll, sorry. It'll be like the squirrel from Christmas Vacation. <laughs> yeah, it's like Black Bolt. You know, is leading this new thing of squirrels in my neighborhood. <laughs> you guys, you guys don't live near like a, a nuclear power plant or anything, do you? <laughs> no, we live. Uh, you know, Oak Park is the land of you know, like they, 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 this, this Frank Lloyd Wright area. You know, where they got these houses. So, you know, it's a nice area, and people are nice and all, but. You know, I grew up in a city, man, where I'm just used to just, like, you know, there ain't a, ain't a, you don't appreciate, like, shit like garbage pickup and snow removal and all the shit that the city does until you move out in the burbs and they've got, like, all these extra fees and rules and bullshit out here that I'm just not used to, you know. Well, that and, parking in front of your house thing is weird, yeah. like. Oh, no, it's fucked up out in the suburbs. You're not allowed to park on the side streets at night. I just don't understand it. I mean, I understand they're, like, trying to keep. You know, assholes from like you know, in the city you got nothing but like abandoned cars. Cars will sit there for you know, ten years before somebody you know, a family moves inside living in the car before they move the fucking thing away. But then you just light it on fire and then they take it away. <laughs> but, you know, out here, I mean, there's all these half-ass rules of shit you can and can't do, and I and I'm just not used to it. I mean, it's it's like. You go to the and, it, and there's nothing that you can park at anymore. Everything's drive through out here in the burbs. Everything's strip malls and you know Walmart and you know everybody says good morning and is pushing a baby stroller. That's <laughs> why we moved out here. <laughs> I'm used to if you don't hear gunshots at least three times a night, something's wrong. Because then you know at least that's the thinning of the herd. You know it keeps the population <laughs> down. Out here there's no gunshots to keep the assholes in line. You know? Yeah, you know, you need somebody to get shot in the ass at least once a night to keep people to go, hey, fuck, be careful, you know. Out here in the burbs, they, they, they argue for two hours about a cup of coffee at Starbucks, you know. Those are the guys that need to get shot in the ass, you know. I, I, I stand in line, I I'm just there. sitting here sometimes, and I just, I just fantasize about having, like, a sock filled with, with like, cat turds. You just whack them in the side of the fucking head with it and go, asshole, it's a cup of coffee, relax. And you've had it too damn good. <laughs> you guys live in the burbs, right or no? Yeah, yeah. Well, Brian, oh, I, I'm, I'm not used to it. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just maybe a white trash. I'm just, you know. But we don't have. I mean, no. we don't have the kind of rules that you're talking. I mean, we, every. I don't even uh, have off street parking. I mean, I we park in front of the house, yeah. and you can park in front. Yeah, on the side streets. Right. Yeah. I mean, See, what? That, that's how I grew up. Where side streets was where you park. Of course, in the city, now the side streets have gotten. You know, where, you, where if you don't park your car by like eight or nine o'clock at night, forget it. You're, you're not going to find a spot because the, the city's getting so crowded. And you know, if you don't have you know garage space, which most apartment buildings don't, you got to park on the street. So that, or you've got the hillbillies that got to park three blocks away from their house because the car you know they haven't made their payment. So <laughs> the repo guy comes to get it. It's usually parked in front of my house. Before they can come and get it, <laughs> so you have cars parked in front of your house for like you know that are like the the, the red Torino from Starsky and Hutch, where you're like, <laughs> fuck, this thing's been here a long time. <laughs> so, it was new when they parked it there. Yeah, they got a gremlin still parked in front of my mom's house. It's been there since '72. You know. The Levi's gremlin is parked in front of. Oh it. boy, oh, that brings back memories. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sal. You well, guys, how's it going? How's the show going? How's everything going with you know with things? I've been I've been kind of out of the loop a little bit. Everything's going very well. Yeah, we Still have mowing along. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't I don't I don't think we could be any more pleased with uh, everything right now. Everything's good. You know, listeners still you know holding strong and you know. Absolutely, the community is uh, I think stronger than ever, and uh, I, I as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. So now, what happened? How come there's only a couple of you now? You guys are pissed off at me, or, or <laughs> no? Well, Peter, Peter, oh, yeah, you know, tell the story. Finally got to him. Peter, what happened? Peter moved to Philly now, right? So, uh, so he and his roommate went to New York today, and then he didn't get back from New York in time to get the bus to Reading from Philly. Oh, okay. So he couldn't, he couldn't make it. And then, uh, well, Shane and Matt are coming to the eight o'clock because they had, because we're doing two shows tonight, and they just couldn't get here for six o'clock. So, right. There was a, there was like a facts of life <laughs> marathon on TV to watch, or yeah, probably you know, because <laughs> Peter went to New York. They're having that big strike in New York. All the uh, 
all this, you know, everything on Broadway is closed. You know, all the stagehands from Broadway. Yeah, the stagehands. Yeah, organized crime. Yeah. That stagehands union. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Yeah, but one one thing Brian didn't make mention of it's it's Peter's female roommate. So that's why he. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So he's he's living La Vida Loca, not it. <laughs> yes, he is. I told you about them fucking Puerto Ricans. You know? Oh yeah. And everybody laughs at me and makes fun of me. Like Sal, you shouldn't say such things. I'm oh, like, no. come on, he's he's a dance guy. I mean, the only reason you have a baby is so you've got an excuse to get out of doing shit. Okay, the only reason you become a dancer is to meet girls. It's the mm-hmm. same way. You know? And when he says, "Oh, come on, it's professional. I'm not meeting any girls," he's so full of shit. It's not even yeah. funny. Yeah, man, you got that right. <laughs> and she's a dancer, or she's just yep, like, yep, she's yep. a dancer. They went to New York to hang out with a person. A friend of theirs that they were in Forty Second Street with. So, how long have they these two been together now? No. Oh, they're not really. No, together, they're not together. It's, they're it's, just. It's, he just moved in last week. Yeah, it's purely platonic. That's what they say. Now. Right. Well, that's how it starts out. <laughs> then you know you start getting up for water. Oh, I'm sorry, I went back into the wrong room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you walk I didn't know with a boner. You know, and they catch on real fast. Yeah, I didn't know you were in this room. I walked in here right. naked. You get them drunk. <laughs> Start with the oh, I just want you to know how I've always felt. That kind of bullshit. <laughs> Does this taste weird to you? Yeah, roommates is just about getting them drunk and giving them a roofie, and then the next thing you know, it's you know, you're in court going, oh, Your Honor, I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. You know? I thought it was an aspirin. I mean, I'm sorry. Come on, anybody? I always, or, or it's even worse. I love them when you see guys. It's like, oh, she's just a friend. You know, I always love that bullshit. You only got two kinds of friends. If there's the type of friend that, you know, you want to fuck, but she won't let you, or you haven't yet. Those are the only two types of female friends. Because I don't know many females I'd want to talk to if there wasn't sex involved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, think about it. Think about the, what you, how you'd slim it down real fast if there was no sex involved or there was no vagina connected to any of the females you know. <laughs> That's Pretty very much true. eliminate probably about 95%. It'd be like one of those... Those those Harlan Ellison books were like the whole fucking re- the race just drops off, as far as I'm concerned. And when I hear, oh, she's a roommate, she's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. That works if they're not good looking, right? If they're good looking, forget about it. Yeah, she's a, just, she's a she's yeah, a she's a hot dancer. What do you think? Pictures, yeah. So. Shocked, yeah, which means even if she's ugly, she's got a nice body. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. forget about it. <laughs> I mean, and he's Puerto Rican, so it's in the blood. You know, he's got to make a move sooner or later. It's like, you know, putting a scorpion in your back pocket. It's you eventually. Yeah, it's pretty much... <laughs> it's fucking help it. It's his nature. Pretty much if there's a hole there, he's there. Right. It, you know, it's like if you're a hairdresser, not, you know, and you're gay. Come on. One goes with the other. Or a flight attendant. Can't be a male flight attendant and not be gay. You know, it just can't happen. Now I'm going to get letters on the forum. <laughs> hey, asshole, I'm a flight attendant and I like girls. I'm oh, well, kidding. It's a joke. You know, I'll, I'll make like a generalization and I always get the one guy on the forum that has to write me a nasty letter. <laughs> you asshole, I'm, I'm a scorpion and I don't bite people. You know, shit like that. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, fuck, I was kidding. What do you want me to talk about, my kid? Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> if I send pe- people, oh, send more pictures. And then I think, you know what? I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to become that guy, you know, that sends the baby pictures and people start to get, like, nauseated by it. Right, like, what the hell you, do I want to see? Do you send pictures? baby pictures or no? Uh, no. Yeah, you see, I did it first, and now I, I tell my wife, I go, I, I can't, because, you know, it just... See, you know, what, you know what we do? Tasha keeps a blog about everything that's going on with Clara, right? So she put right. pictures up there and stories. If people want to know about it, they can go there. If they don't, oh. they don't have to go. Then everybody's happy. Yeah, I, I just, I can't. I mean, I'll do it like for, you know, people I know who's, I know their wives or girlfriends are reading their emails. And then, it, you know, like Simone's girlfriend, Greta, she likes to see pictures of the baby and this and that. But, you know, but most for the most part, you gotta you gotta reel that shit in because people get sick of it real fast. Uh, <laughs> every once in a while, but otherwise I'm like, no, I don't want to. You know, 
show him with the Batman suit or whatever. <laughs> dress him up. Yes, I might dress him up as a pumpkin for for Halloween, right? This kid's got the look on his face like he, he he's like he's he's gonna hate us for the rest of his life after he sees this picture. This is the photograph that scarred the kid for life. He's gonna look at it and he's never he's he's never gonna be more humiliated than when he sees his Halloween picture of his like his first Halloween. You know. With the little stalk hat, you know, the whole night. <laughs> I told my wife, I go, why don't you just take a picture of him naked? It would be, you know, <laughs> he, he would be less humiliated with that one than with this one. <laughs> but, you know, they got to dress him up. They treat the babies like Barbie dolls, I swear to God. Yep. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for you joining us. had enough of my bullshit. Well, we're... <laughs> We're uh, at our like we're trying to do these shorter episodes now. So uh. yeah, you know, listen. Be sure you you let me know. Uh, you keep in touch with me about Luca. You're gonna have a great time. Oh, I will. They're, they're really really good people, and uh, we should try to have the uh, the the, the three hundred thing in Luca next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got any uh, any any uh, overseas listeners uh, in, in in Italy or no? Um. Well, we. I, I'm. I would say for sure that we have one or two i don't know that anybody's l- let us uh made us aware of that but i can look right, at the right. uh, where our listeners come from and i see hits from italy so you know there are a yeah, few in the uk but i just wasn't <clears throat> sure because some countries you've got a sort of a english problem and in other countries not really in italy you can you can cheat but for the most part they speak italian you know you gotta you, they fake english a little bit but I, I doubt if the episodes are you know they're going to be able to understand the whole... Unless, you know, Simone. He only listens to see if I talk shit about him. <laughs> right. no, it's true. I mean, it's self-centered. Oh, I heard you talking about me again. I'm like, come on. Cut it out. Nobody gives a shit, Simone. <laughs> he wanted to come out with me, and I told him it would be better if he did an episode with you guys just, you know, to focus on X-Men and, you know, and uh, stuff he's doing in Marvel. Yeah, I know Peter. I think has been emailing him or something. So I, yeah, he really wants to. He really wanted to come on tonight, but I said, you know, no, I don't want to have to translate for him. <laughs> <laughs> but he really wants to come on and talk about what he's going to be doing and all that kind of shit. Yeah, we'll have him on real soon. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely I definitely love to have you guys him. wanted oh, yeah. him on. So. Awesome. Well, uh, have a great night and uh, all right, guys. You know, good luck for with everything. Me again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yep. You got any questions about the originals or anything, Pants? Let me know. You got it. Just, just you know, don't don't trade you know sexual favors for pages. <laughs> it's a nasty circle. I wouldn't get much for it. <laughs> well, that's what Jamie did. And yeah. Look what happened to him. Yep. So. All downhill. <laughs> I, I used to be good looking and have full head of hair. <laughs> that's right. It's okay when you're younger and thin, but then when mm-hmm. you get older, it's just. You, you look like you went up like share, you know, with a tattoo on your ass and pages from fifty two. <laughs> wow! Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that lasting image. We were so close to getting out, you know, with decency and, and, yep. and you know and, and integrity, we and then I had back to just in. drop it right into the sewer. You know? right. Oh God! All right, okay, sir. Sal. All right, gentlemen. Have a great night. Yep. Take care of yourself. Yep. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. All right, man. Bye. <laughs> Always a good time. Yeah, so, and welcome, Jamie. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just glad I, I got here for a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's always always a good time with Sal. Got that right. All right. We went overboard, so uh, I guess we'll wrap things up here. This episode of Comic E Speak was sponsored by E Gerber Products. If you are not keeping your books in Mylars and you're serious about their long term uh, state and security, uh, especially for some of your older books, your Silver Age stuff, your Golden Age stuff. Uh, you probably want to look into getting some Mylars. And uh, E. Gerber makes a great product, and they are noticeably cheaper than some of the other brands of Mylar out there. So check them out, egerber.com, E. Gerber Products, the protector for the collector. And if you'd like to send us email, it's Uncle Sal. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, comicgeekspeak at gmail.com. <laughs> Visit our website at comicgeekspeak.com. To leave us a voicemail, the number is 215-279-8839. And uh, you can check out the awesome community of uh, comic fans at thecomicforums.com. And you can also find our recent episodes on worldfamouscomics.com and silverbulletcomics.com, as well as the latest in news, reviews, columns, contests, and more. And as always, we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes, one listener at a time. 